Hello, welcome to, uh, it's been a while, uh, well, kind of like one day, I haven't posted anything. So I wanted to talk about something that I wanted to experiment with because I thought it'd be like really super fun, um, is kind of connecting what my experience might be through relocating to a country and at the same time using that as sort of expressing my thoughts about Mm, like about the country so it's both it's kind of i'm kind of mixing relocation with mundane astrology i've never really tried mundane astrology so we'll give it a shot i don't know <laughs> i'm gonna grab some books here while i uh you know continue on with this one so um in this case uh the country i wanted to talk about was hungary so as I zoom that out, you're probably going to see my picture, my image, like, dumb here. <laughs> and so it's really small, but the point is you need to see, like, the mouse itself. Hopefully you see it. It's like you can see me moving. Okay. So um, first of all, um, the country is Hungary. So because I took Hungarian for three years in university, and I thought it's such a weird but beautiful language, and it's weird, but and then I noticed that it's... <laughs> They're very conservative uh, as a culture. I mean, not all Hungarians, of course, are, but as a culture, ge generally speaking, yeah, they're conservative. But I kind of wanted to go into that and see how the overall, I guess you can say culture. I see culture sort of in a chart as also like the, the chart itself. Like if your natal chart is your personality or your your path and then that means that a, a, a country or an events like personality or nature or cult is culture so it's weird right but it makes sense i don't know to me it makes sense so we look at um many things here usually the sun is the one that is looked at in terms of like of course it's the one that's ruling everything but it's also the first house i heard i read somewhere i was reading this website as like the first house is most most of where events happen or where it pertains directly to mundane astrology so i'm going to give this a shot correct me if i'm wrong here whatever i'm doing this completely for like fun of it i'm still learning as i go so uh, as you can probably see here we have saturn conjunct uh, Saturn, Saturn, con Saturn, oh, and Saturn and Neptune conjunct, uh, also Uranus conjunct, uh, Ascendant. So I read somewhere that, so Ascendant is like the first house stuff, like it's how people view or how they are seen by the world. So naturally it's Ascendant, right? But because it's conjunct here, we have, uh, Neptune, which apparently represents some sort of like right wing stuff, more like more socialist no right oh, sorry yeah right wing not socialist <laughs> right wing more uh conservative values more leaning towards fascism not to be controversial here but yeah at least that's what this guy said i'm going to link his um this uh, information below in the comments below the comments you know the description and then okay so and then so that's uranus and then we have neptune which is right here it's in the first house so um, Neptune represents the more left side, more left wing, sort of more open socialist, more towards communism. Um, but I feel like because of the, you notice this right here, that because of the conjunction to both the first, to uh, ascendant and right there, because of the conjunction between, the, to the conjunction to the ascendant and Saturn, we have both like a sort of an I think you can say an in balance, so to speak. I don't know if that makes really any sense, but I do see that because Uranus was in the twelfth house right here, because Uranus is in the twelfth house, it's sort of things that they hide or things are hidden, things are hidden enemies, and they kind of don't appear very Uranian. You know, Uranus is in, also was in the sign of Capricorn, so that means a lot to do with us. Um, let me double check here. So Uranus represents sudden changes we may or as me we may already know, but it also represents let me double check here. Let me cheat from this book. Da 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 I can never have easy access to it. Okay. Okay. Okay, so inside nature's laws. So airplanes, so anything humanitarian, they're kind of hidden towards that it's hidden because it's in the twelfth house. So anything eccentric, anything to do with a revolution and dictatorship 
individualism. So a lot to do with very Uranian stuff. But apparently to this guy's definition that Uranus is more about right wing. I don't know how that came about. You would think that's more like Saturn, right? Kind of makes sense because like it's conservative, right? So I don't know. I would say, it's, I don't know. I don't get that. But anyways, that's what he says. So it kind of makes sense in a way where Uranus is hidden. So they don't really... Your Hungary is kind of known for its very interesting culture where it's like very, very different, right? It's not it's not really Eastern European, but it is at the same time and not Western, but sort of because it's with Europe. And I don't know there's a bunch of factors, um, but what people see is like a sort of facade you see here. I would say that's also Neptune. There's like sort of an illusion that people see, an illusion that... Um, they are uh, uh, that that the, the appearance to the world is that Hungary is, I guess, not so conservative, but more fluid in this case. But remember that Neptune represents idealism. So idealism in um, sat in Capricorn, its idealism in Capricorn has a lot to do with it's it becomes more. It's not really idealism anymore. It actually becomes a little more uh, rigid because of Capricorn. Capricorn gives that flavor of very earthiness, about sort of a perfectionist sort of thing. Not really, but more like hard work, discipline. It's all about conservatism and all that stuff. So that kind of appears that way. So I would say both Uranus and Neptune, because astronomically, astronomically speaking, they are technically twins. But that's not the point here. So I find that that's really interesting. And if we look into the aspects, we have uh, here, what do we have here? Saturn, Uranus, sorry, Saturn, Neptune is, op is in opposition to Chiron. So that makes sense because now we have like contractual uh, uh, relationships to public, affair, public affairs, which is the seventh house right here, right? The seventh house to Chiron. So in this case, it doesn't give Hungary a sort of sense of safety or security or certainty in terms of like relating also with others through a more connected way. You know, um, the moon apparently represents the general public whilst the sun represents those in charge of government. That's also Saturn, but apparently Saturn is more like with the older, sort of more, um, more conservative rulers, so to speak. So that kind of makes sense, but because we're talking about public affairs and it's Cancer here, Moon is Moon is right at home. It's a ruling planet for Cancer, so you can you can imagine that there's a reason why there's sort of that that wounding sort of Chiron represents that sort of inability to in the, in terms of like mundane astrology. I would just I would interpret that lightly. Okay, don't you know you can get mad at me, whatever. Put in the comments below that Chiron by represent all that stuff. So anyways, um, I'm not going to go straight into the other stuff with mundane astrology because I wanted to sort of just, I'm just like dipping my feet into like the water lightly. I'm not really going into that. 